Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Unconstructed Bible Talk, right here where we're going to just continue the conversation from Sunday, where our own Minister Lloyd Stevenson brought a dynamic message. And I encourage everyone to go back and li uh, listen to the message in its entirety. What here tonight on Unconstructed uh, Bible Talk, we just like to kind of talk a little bit more in depth some of the things that um, our ministers cannot uh, summarize <laughs> within that 15 or 20 minutes, right, guys, that's, that's given on Sunday. Uh, there's a little constraint that happens sometimes. And Minister uh, Esther, we love, 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 love to hear, you know, the or the origin of uh, your message. Uh, keep it pushing on on Sunday, and and how God dealt with you, and even bringing forth such a dynamic word. Actually, I, I think I'm becoming a bit of a biblical feminist in that I, I love uh, bringing the woman to the forefront. They're, they're sometimes mentioned and sometimes they're not, but they all have such a dynamic role to play in our Christian history. And she's just like a few other unnamed women in the Bible who had a tremendous effect on our world. You know, there's the woman at the well, there's the woman with issues with blood, there's the Samaritan woman, you know, all of them. So I just wanted to, I saw something, I read something, and I thought, that sounds like something I'd like to delve into. And she truly came out to be an interesting subject. You're absolutely right. Um, um, there were a few things that you said within um, the, the message that um, as I was taking notes, I was like, wow, that's good. That's good. It's good to be able to kind of reference like we do here in Unconstructed Bible Talk, kind of some of what came from the old, bringing it forward to the now, um, talking about ways, you know, that we can um, emulate some of the lessons, you know, that's learned from the scriptures because the scriptures are still relevant and will always be relevant to our lifestyle. And that's really the essence of why Unconstructed Bible Talk even came forward, was being able to take what we're learning and make it applicable to life right now. Yeah. Make, it, make it nice and easy. You know, um, I, now um, as, as a biblical feminist, I'm with you sister just a little bit. All right, girl power. Girl power. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn it back over to the guys as y'all heard us say we're a bit of a biblical feminist movement here right uh, <laughs> from the male perspective of looking at Edith and the role that was played in, in, this, in this particular passage of scripture um, I think it was Genesis 19 was it 1 through 38 um, where, you know, it's a famous passage of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's well known, but what I love, Minister Esther, was that you brought out a kind of remote, small, but very significant piece in dealing with Lot's wife. And perhaps like the intent of why she turned around. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just one of you guys, I don't know who or both of you guys, you know, as you were hearing this passage again, you know, was there anything that jumped out to you about this particular passage that was brought up from a more feminist perspective? Well, for me, I, I, um, I don't know that it, and I'm looking at it from, yeah, from, from the fact that it was brought about from a woman's 
quote unquote perspective. But the thing that stood out to me is that not just the woman, but we all tend to look back. Mm -hmm. And um, although we don't get physically turned into a uh, block of salt, so to speak, um, we find that if we, and I, I love the way uh, Minister Esther brought it out, was the fact that when you look back and you become um, engulf, engulfed, shall I, for the lack of a better word, by what you're leaving behind or by what you're supposed to be leaving behind, it can be destructive. So although you may not get turned into a pillar of salt, if you tend to look back and um, vacillate on what it is you're leaving behind to the point that it overwhelms you, it can cause you, as she said, to miss what God has for you. So that uh, stood out to me um, and it's not just from a woman's point of view, it's from any of us. When we get so involved in looking back that we want to go back, and, and, that, and that's the point about looking back, because when you look back, <laughs> I think I think that's the broad this out Sunday too. Oh, there were some good times. Uh, we, we When we start to follow God, we, we leave some good times behind. We, we leave some times behind that if we tend to focus on them, we may even want to revisit them. So that stood out to me uh, more, well, I won't say more than anything else, but it's one of the things that really stood out to me is, it, as she said, keep on pushing, or keep it pushing. I said keep on, I think it was Isaac Hayes that saying, was he was the one saying the song, keep on pushing? Yeah, so you got to keep pushing forward and stop looking back uh, because that that you leave behind can become so enticing. Yeah. Curtis Mayfield and the impression. Oh, Curtis Mayfield. I missed. Okay. <laughs> hey, it was one of them boys. What can I say? <laughs> A lot, most, a lot of the times when I was putting it together, something that Dwayne has said previously kept running through my mind, and I was doing my best not to put it into my message, <laughs> but so, something about he said, you can't go forward looking in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. so, go, so go ahead, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I know. I just, uh, uh, just to piggyback on the Pastor T there, um, just a little bit, not so much about a woman's point of view or feminine uh, aspect of uh, the sermon. I just want to deal with everyone because of something that you said, uh, even though she turned into a pillow of salt for being disobedient to what God, direction that God had given them. Uh, I like to bring it to the uh, 21st century. We don't turn into salt. We don't turn into salt anymore, but we often turn into people we don't want to be because we look and we worry what's behind us rather than what is yet to come in the future. And I think Pastor just rewording a little bit. Pastor just said that. But uh, um, that's what I got out of the, the messages today. We might not turn into a pillow of salt. But because of our lack of obedience to God and to God's word, we turn into people that we don't want to be. And because of that, once we turn into those people, um, uh, we have a hard time coming back or being a part of um, God's congregation. Um, and you hear a lot of that out there, and we've said it before here, is that People have a tendency to try to be uh, absolutely righteous before they come back into the church. 
because of just what we said, because of the things and places they go, things and places that they do. And really, Pastor said it best. It, sometimes you just don't want to turn those things completely loose. And this is what I, I, I saw in the scripture and the lesson Sunday was that <clears throat> we can preach this today because Lot, uh, being a, a righteous man, and that's what the Bible said, because he believed in God, he had faith in God, but he was flawless. He chose the pleasures of life. If he was given a choice, he chose the pleasures of life. But when it came to life and death decision, he listened to what God was instructing him. And I say that because people today don't think because they're flawless, that they can't be righteous or have a, or live a righteous life. But that's just not true. That's the point I want everybody to get out of there, whether you're a woman or a man. We're flawless. The Bible tells us we come short of God's glory, but that doesn't mean that we can't work to, toward being righteous in God's sight, in God's eyes. That's good. That's good. That's good. Even in our flawed nature of choices, lifestyle, he's, he's made a way for us to um, come back. <laughs> uh, be reconciled to to be accepted to be a part of um, you know with that um, there there was one thing in that and thank you gentlemen for sharing that the message while while it it we were pointing out um, the wife and her choice it was a good message for all for everyone. Um, and that, um, you know, as you were telling the story, uh, Minister Esther, one thing that struck me, um, kind of hard was that the angels physically <laughs> escorted them out. There was, there was physical engagement from mm -hmm. them being in the house closing the door, pulling them back in, escorting them out. Is there a significance, guys, to the physical nature that the angels, you know, that, that is spoken of or mentioned in this particular passage? You know, um, so I, I, I think that, and it's to me, I think that when people think of and they hear about angels, they think about angels not, manifesting not engaging not i don't know i don't even know what the word is but this passage clearly spoke to um the angels playing a very significant role you know um but you know the angels, this, but i don't know yeah angels came in the form of men just mm -hmm. like when jesus came in the form of man he wept he got angry. So I think mm -hmm. these angels also in the form of man got frustrated. <laughs> and we can see why. Mm -hmm. Correct. So even Correct. though they were heavenly, they were taking on the human qualities. Correct. Correct. God will use. <laughs> what is the passage that even talks about using a donkey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes he just needs to get our attention, right? And yeah. he is slow to anger, but it didn't say that he never gets angry. Mm -mm. Not at all. Just says Not at all. Forever. Yes. So, you know, if somebody were listening and they were like, I don't know what they're talking about. What, how could we help them know, like, in our modern day, as we live now, you know, ways that God shows up, you know, for us um, to give a nod and say, hey, go this way, do this, this person I'm bringing in your life to 
be there to support, to help. Is that, is there truth to that for someone who are, who, who's listening that, you know, we kind of always speak to our believers, but for those that are listening that may be like, I don't know about all of this. Is there such a thing to look for, you know, modern day angels, modern day ways of God revealing himself? There are several ways. Um, one of the most common ways that I can think of is uh, your parents. Um, for some reason, I'm having these songs come in my head tonight and I can't figure out why, but there was a song that says, Mama told me not to come. That ain't the way to have fun. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I'm quite sure if if you've had a parent that is concerned, they will tell you from time to time not to do something. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. we, similar to similar to Lot, similar to his wife, uh, tend not to listen. Um, not Lot made excuses. You know, well, that's too far. Can we go somewhere else? Um, they had to literally drag him out of Sodom uh, because he wanted to do. We talked about his wife, but he was he had some things that he was hanging on to also. Mm -hmm. So that is the one way is by listening to parents, grandparents, uh, great grandparents, uh, somebody who's telling you not to do something, uh, and you decide you want to do it anyway. The other way is uh, that I'll mention and, and briefly is that um, we often call it that little voice. Mm -hmm. Well, that little voice, I heard that little voice and, 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 and that little voice told me not to do this or to turn right and I turn left. That little, vo that little voice is God's spirit speaking to you. And quite often we don't listen until it's too late and then we say, well, I wish I had listened to my first, a lot of times we'll say instinct or we'll give it a different name, but what it is is God's spirit speaking to you and it doesn't matter who you are. That's good, Pastor. That's good. Now, anybody want to add to that? Well, we, we were talking about the physical part and he used um, um, mothers and fathers and, and and that God used them to physically be there to um, uh, confront us on some of the choices in our lives that we were making. Mm -hmm. Some of the physical part is say for instance, uh, um, God uses um, uh, the physical part, say for instance, you're going on, you're living the life that you, the life of life, you're doing what you want to when you want to, and then bam, whether it's something health-wise, whether it's an accident, whether it's something on that nature, that's a physical part of God getting your attention. Because when you look back and you look at that car that you just walked away from, and it's like, I shouldn't be here. Or health issues come up where and I'm not talking about long-term health issues. I'm talking about these things that happen to us because we abuse our body. We are drinking too much. We're doing drugs or whatever, and bam, you know, uh, um, if it's not for the doctors or not for someone uh, giving you CPR, not someone being in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. for you, it, that mm -hmm. that's an awakening too. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we listen to it, sometimes we don't. Uh, another example is smoking. Sometimes, you know, a doctor tell you if you don't quit smoking, you're going you're gonna to die. That's mm -hmm. an awakening. Some people listen to it, mm -hmm. some don't. So those are physical things that happen in our lives mm -hmm. that that God shows us we need to, to go in another direction. That's good. That's good. So, so in that vein, um, Ministers uh, um, Esther, Minister Knox, um, Pastor, when we choose, the doctor told us to stop smoking, we choose not to. 
and we continue. When we choose those modern day, you know, defiances or devaluing of life or devaluing, devaluing God's will to use the doctor to tell you or your parents to guide you and you defy that, right? Um, it, 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 it's the similar, like looking back, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just as we're walking through our lives, we're, we're basically, you know, doing that same act as what the looking back did, you know, and if you, I think you said it, Pastor, don't necessarily turn to a pillar of salt but we have some of the same effects in our lives. The stop, the start, the stop, the having to start over, all of those kind of things that, um, you know, God has been trying to get our attention and get us to um, move in a slightly different direction. And I think, um, um, Minister Esther, you were talking about, you know, the ultimate sin was yearning it for the comforts of what she knew. And Pastor, you just mentioned it about Lot, you know, yearning for that familiar thing, that lifestyle, what you know, what you, and not fostering a new behavior or to get a new outcome, right? Um, But somebody, what would you say to somebody that's like, I just don't want to give it up. I don't want to give it up because it feels good. And I like smoking and, and I like drinking, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I want, I want a different life, but I, I don't want to give all of that up now. I don't want to give it up. You know, I don't think you can say anything to them except I'll pray for you because there's nothing that we can say to make that person come out of their comfort zone. They have to want to do that themselves. So all we can do is wish and hope and pray for the very best. That's true. That's true. That's true. And, and I'm going to bring up a scenario um, that was brought to me. And I'd love for us to just discuss it, you know, out because it's kind of right here in what we're dealing with. And that is... Um, you know, I have someone who is finding themselves at a crossroad um, in their marriage. Um, having been deceived before, infidelity, only to have lived now almost 30 plus years, husband and wife, having forgiven, only to find out now uh, that this has happened yet again, and it is ongoing. And so the question that was posed to me was, when do you know enough is enough? Hmm. When do you know enough is enough that will cause you to walk away from your marriage? Uh, because now the trust has been broken um, that, uh, I've hung in there and this sense of familiarity now for 30 years, it's scary to think of this not being 30 plus years, but almost half of it now has had a, um, undercurrent of untruth. Mm -hmm. so what would we say in this kind of Sodom and Gomorrah moment of betrayal well, kind of a hard uh, it's a hard thing to answer for someone else um, mm -hmm. From an individual standpoint, when I got to the point that I knew nothing was going to change, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how hard I tried, 
Um, and it was becoming detrimental to my health. Mm -hmm. At that point, it was time for me to let it go because there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could say. Um, I had put in everything that I could put in to make things better, and it didn't. So <laughs> when you've done all you can do, you know, at some point, you've got to take your mental, physical, and spiritual health into uh, mind. And when, when it began to detrimentally affect me physically, mentally, and spiritually, that was when I knew it was time to that there was nothing I could do to change things. So, um, for me, that was the that was the indication that you know I needed to get out of it. Plus, the fact, and I'll throw this in: when it gets to the point that you're thinking about hurting somebody, it's time to go. And usually, that comes, and we're not advocating divorce or anything. Just giving life experiences to you. And the only thing I'd add to what the pastor says when there is no trust, trust is the main uh, ingredient that when there is no trust and you've done all you can do to make it work and it's affecting your way of life, your health, those things in which um, affect you the most then you have to look at going in a different direction. And also, yeah. you know, how that person has asked themselves, are you okay with living with this level of dishonor and disrespect? And also, how many times and ways does this man have to tell you he doesn't want you before you're going to believe it and act on it? Mm. So once a person I, tells you who they are, believe it. Okay. I, I like that too. Uh, I'm not going to say because we're we're speaking, I am speaking from a man of point. Uh, it may not be that he doesn't love her, but he's not in love with her. And, and, and because I say that, because when you are in love, you do all you can not to hurt the one you love. And I'm just saying, he, from a man perspective, you know, there's an old saying that the old folks used to say, you know, uh, when you when you are getting the milk from the cow, why would I change? <laughs> I'm we talking just talking to young ladies from a man perspective. If you're giving us everything without. Um, giving up anything, we're man. We'll take it. And we'll run with it as long as we can run with it. Yeah, but mm. Also, that this man that Belinda's referring to is not honoring his marriage vows that he probably took before mm. God. Yeah. And also, he's not honoring the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments either. So why hook your wagon to that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, it's hard. I, I, I think that the hard part of it is leaving all of what the past represents in terms of children, grandchildren, years of investment of time. Um, even though, even though you, you, you question the value of the relationship. It still is a relationship. Broken as it is, it's still a relationship. And I think that, you know, uh, Dwayne, Minister Esther, uh, you know, you're right. If you can get it for a little of nothing, and still have everything else that you have, 
why not, right? But there's so many people that um, would rather have something than nothing. Can we speak to that? Mm -hmm. Something versus nothing. Well, it, it, I don't know. I don't really know. The first thing I'll say to qualify what I'm about to say is I can't tell anybody when it's time to leave or when it's time to give up. That's something that and I, and I tell my children the same thing. You know, they'll come and they're having issues. And they, well, I think I need to, what do you think? I can't make that decision for you. That That's your decision. You, you've got to make that. And and I tell them, this is the reason I'm not going to make that decision for you. Because if I say do this and you do it, then I'm the one that's going to take the blame for it. If you hadn't, if you hadn't told me to do this, I wouldn't have done it. And this, this, and this, this would have happened. So... With my children, I say, you're called, but you know when it, when you've taken all you can take. But I'm not going to tell you to get a divorce. I'm not going to tell you to separate. Uh, I'll tell you that the person doesn't seem to be good for you, but the decision is yours to make. So, you know, that that's, that's what I say with that, because I don't want to be the one that said, if you had it. You know, so I, I kind of stray away from that part of it. Um, so I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and and as far as hanging on, I don't even know if I want to go there or not. Um, but. Is the is the materialistic? I'll just put it with materialistic. Is the materialistic thing that you're hanging on to worth the anxiety and the frustration that you're going through in order to hang on to it? And the other part would be if it's children and grandchildren. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> well, what I, I can I can contest to. Thank Pastor said if uh, I got to the point where I was mad enough, I probably could have hurt someone because of the infidelity that was happening. Um, and and that was the thing that triggered minds is, is that didn't know what the future held, but I knew what I was dealing with in the past was not healthy. So what I tell a uh, young lady is and what we've been talking about tonight and what she preached on Sunday is we worried about what's behind us rather than what is yet to come. Let me tell you something. You're, if she's a woman of faith and this, know that she's dealing with you, she is uh, a woman of faith. She's got to she's got to trust God that what God is going to do for her when she has to make these hard decisions is greater than anything she's leaving, anything she has gained, and anything that um, him and her have together. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm like Pastor, I'm not going to tell her, gather her belongings and move, move on. But that's what I did. I left the house that I was renting. Only thing I had were my kids, my clothes, and my car. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But I trusted God and I trusted what God had for us in the future was greater than anything that we had gained at that moment or anything in our past. And I'm witness that uh, because of that, I found someone that is my better half or is my partner in life. And she puts up with a lot more anybody that I've been with in the past and yet we're here and, and we've raised six wonderful kids and um, I, that's all I can tell her because I've been there you got to make that I can't make the decision for it but you got to make it and as a man tell talking to her as a, from a man if he's mm -hmm. doing it and he promised that he won't do it mm -hmm. he's doing it again 
-hmm. He will continue to do it as long as mm -hmm. the situation is the same. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Minister Esther, that just is crazy. <laughs> the truth is kind of hard to receive, but it's better to hear it and, and chew on it and digest it than to um, kind of have an imaginative imagination about what it could be versus what it really is. And I like the way you brought it back to the message because that's where it was coming from. And you, even just asking the question, you know, um, uh, comfort, sometimes, you know, going into that new season of life that God wants us to go into is a little uncomfortable, Pastor. You know, the it's, it doesn't look the same. It don't feel the same. And it's stretching our boundaries, expanding our territories, making us have to take a look at relationships as to whether or not it's moving us forward or taking us back you know, um, allowing us to grow or is hindering us, but being able to really um, find the value in who God is in our lives can be a little challenging. Yeah. Well, it's always challenging to step out and, I, and back to the message from Sunday. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. It's downright frightening to step out into the unknown, to move forward and not know how things are going to turn out, to not know, to not even know how you're going to make it. <laughs> I, I, I listened to what Dwayne said he took from his first marriage. <laughs> Uh, and he, he kind of beat me a, a little bit because all I took out of mine was clothes that nobody else could wear, a TV, a vacuum cleaner, and my car. Uh, we had just recently, well, within a matter of uh, maybe eight years or so, bought a new, brand new home, uh, furnished it from top to bottom. Uh, but for me, I had gotten to the point where I wasn't happy in that home. Uh, the furniture that I had uh, virtually purchased uh, was not making me happy. Um, coming in and not having a peace of mind. But I didn't, you know, stepping out, I didn't know how things were going to turn out. I had no idea. Uh, my my income was stretched to the limit. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I didn't know. But the only thing I could do was to trust that God would, and that, that was before I became, uh, as my relationship with God had been mended. Uh, that was prior to the mending of my relationship with God. But I, I knew that I knew that I had to make a change because I, um, there was just, there was no alternative at that time. So, um, but it is, it's scary. It's uncomfortable. It is absolutely scary to walk away from everything that you've accumulated into not knowing, even if you're going to have enough gas to make it back and forth to work. <laughs> so it's scary. Yeah. So it's yeah. equally as frightening for a man as it is for a woman in that, in a, in some respect. I know there's a difference, but in some respect it is. I had a friend yeah. who was uh, married for 20 plus years. And according to him, in the last 10 years were absolutely miserable. But they stayed in that marriage because he stayed in the marriage because he did not want to give up the house. The house was everything to him. Mm. And eventually, mm. he had to give up the house mm -hmm. and his car mm. and a bunch of other stuff. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
So you can try to you can try to stay in it because you don't want to give up certain things. But you know, God says, you know, I'm doing a new thing. Let go. Come on with me. And you know, I got this yeah. door's closing. I'm opening up something better for you. Yeah. Yeah. And to a certain degree, you know, when Lot left, he was being told to go one way and he begged to go another way. Maybe that was a part of the fear of letting go or fear of the unknown. Um, but he did ask for something different than what was being offered. Um, you know, so even in that passage, there's a little bit of what, you know, there's a little bit of what we're talking about here tonight in terms of men go through the same type of frustration, fears that women go through, that children go through, we all go through. Uh, change is scary. You know, walking away is scary. Um, leaving everything behind is scary. Um, um, Minister Esther, you brought out about um, the sin being more about the yearning than the actual act of looking back, right? Yeah, I so don't think I, God would forgive, uh, you know, doesn't mind us having a little peek. But if, you know, if we look back and say, oof, I really had some good times back then. <laughs> That's a whole nother ball game right there. Right. I, I believe that's what Edith had in her heart. <laughs> right, 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 right. But this is it's so it's so relevant for now though. Like, have you ever talked to somebody and it's always all about the glory of the past and you're trying to get them in present day or even looking for, but they are so stuck. Like it's horrible. Like your conversation for you. Okay, now we're going to talk about this. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about this. And we're going to go back to that. And it's every time. Is that a form of what we're talking about here? Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we're talking about the passage. So let's go back to that passage for a minute. Let's go back <laughs> to the fact that Lot was a little bit reluctant to leave. So look, think about this. Yeah. The men that at the gate. Yeah. Day in and day out, the men sat at the gate. Gate. Dwayne, yes, you and I know there was some good time at that gate. <laughs> good conversation. There was some good conversation <laughs> at that gate. There was, some, <laughs> there was some lovely things to pass through and by that gate. Mm -hmm. there was and they good, negotiate those things too. There was some get. good smoking going on at that <laughs> gate. There was some good drinking going on at that gate. <laughs> and now I have got to leave that gate mm -hmm. and go way over there. Mm -hmm. I remember not saying, well, wait a minute, there's a little bit of city closer. Can't we go to that one instead? I may not be in Sodom, but every once in a while from that little city over there, I might be able to peek back. <laughs> Negotiating. That that gate mm -hmm. was starting to sound like a barbershop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Barbershop or a little sports bar or a, mm -hmm. a baseball game or... Yeah, that's that was sounding pretty familiar, uh, Minister Esther. Mm hmm. Yes, it was. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and and for us, it would have been the beauty shop or Absolutely. nail shop or a spa or somebody's kitchen <laughs> or the kitchen. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it represented the same thing mm -hmm. not wanting to let go. Yeah. And here's the other thing, too, in relationships, and this is a lot of us have a hard time um, um, recognizing this, is that Lot married someone that wasn't equally yoked. And, and, and he knew that, but he enjoyed the pleasures of that more so than recognizing 
down the road what that would cause. And we all do that. And that's why a lot of people get married. That's why a lot of divorces are happening because we don't marry or look or take the time to invest and find out if that person is equal yo. What are you, what are you talking about, man? It's equal yo. If you, Lot married, he 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 had faith in God. His, his uncle was a great man, a great faithful man. He, he, he was brought up in that environment, but he married someone that, that their religion was they worship a lot of God. That's unequal yo. And so the same thing today, we continue to do that is that uh, if you were raised in, in, in a home where um, as a young man, you respected women, uh, you you worked hard uh, to accomplish and to gain the things in this life. Uh, a woman who uh, was raised in a home uh, uh, where the father uh, took good care of them and taught them mm -hmm what a good man look like. You understand what I'm saying? And then you go mm -hmm. out there and you marry some knucklehead or you marry some uh, woman for her physical looks and not for the inner parts of her. We all want somebody to look good, but you got also, you marry not only, you're not only marrying the outside, you're marrying the inside too. Mm -hmm. So we got to be equally yo. Got to be going in the same direction in life. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's very good. Um, because then we can listen and hear with a different kind of ear. <laughs> See with a different kind of eyesight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the influence will be great in the right perspective. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, one one thing, and I think Blaine kind of touched on this earlier, <clears throat> is that being a person of faith, the best advice that I can give from my point of view is to pray and ask God to reveal to you what it is that he would have you do. Um, I didn't have that luxury because at that point I was, I was I was out there doing my own thing so I didn't have the luxury of praying and asking God to lead me and guide me um, but if you're a person of faith then by all means go to God and pray and ask God to reveal to you uh a, 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 a movie comes to mind. <laughs> the War Room. You might want to set your, your, you might want to turn your closet into a war room and go in and pray about that thing. And God has a way of changing people, not only circumstances, but God has a way of changing people. So you may want to go in and do that war room thing. Um, and then yeah. ask God to really reveal to you how things ought to go. If you haven't seen the movie, you might want to look at the movie, but I get that prayer closet and use it. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. That was, that was a fantastic, fantastic movie to show the visuals of war, spiritual warfare, and um, and how to you know, how to pray your way through a situation um, and to receive the change that only God, only God could have performed that change that happened in that movie. Only God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only God. Um, but this this has been a, a, a wonderful conversation tonight, guys. And thank you so much for indulging the question and giving some answer. I will share this, um, you know, with the person that asked me that particular question, share this, this uh, viewing tonight. And I say to anyone who's listening, if you need any additional further conversation with any of our ministers, 
uh, pastor is going to share with you a number that you can give us a call. Um, you could come visit, you know, the church. Um, we have a pastor, pastors, ministers that are willing to definitely delve in and talk and share and offer uh, sometimes just a unbiased ear. We need that. We need to be able to unpack, share, talk, um, and not necessarily to be told what to do, but to just be able to get it out. Mm -hmm. Just just to get it out and have some support materials to help you through these trying times that we're living through right now, you know, here in the earth, because it's it's a lot going on right now. Um, and so as we prepare to close out this evening, um, I would be remiss to not ask whether we have any nuggets this evening to share um, and, and definitely final thoughts that each of you would share with our listeners tonight? Who would like to start? If, if I could throw in one, one, one additional thing that we as a small membership church has that maybe some large churches don't have. We have a Christian-based psychological counselor. And if you're going through some things, Yes. I invite you two things. One, I invite you to listen to the message on third Sunday of October. And then I invite you to contact or get in touch with us and we will kind of serve as an intermediary, intermediary between you and this young lady. But she does counseling from a Christian perspective. Amen. 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 Minister Amen. Knox, can you share with us and in your Amen. final thoughts this evening? Uh yeah, I want to I want to end with uh just a brief uh, story, and that is everybody knows this gentleman, Michael Johnson, who uh, shattered world records in the 200 and 400, especially in the Olympics here in Atlanta in 1996. Uh, he has a lot of other accomplishment. But the one thing that um, he did, he never focused on, on the who or what that was behind him. He focused on the finish line. And I want us to start focusing on the finish line. And what is the finish line? The finish line is us being obedient to God's word, following God's word, so that we have a chance at everlasting life with God. But also that God can bless our lives with the resources and the things he had already planned to do. We just need to stay focused on him and the finish line. Minister Esther. I'll just add in that uh, moving on is something we know we should do, what we often want to do, but too often what we actually refuse to do. But it remains something God wants us to do. So remember Lot's wife and keep it pushing. Amen. 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 And Pastor, we'll close out with you this evening. Okay, I um, first of all want to invite uh, folks to come and worship with us. That's the first thing I want to do. Uh, we would love to have you to come and worship with us uh, on Facebook. But we would be absolutely elated if you would come and worship with us in person. Yes, we are a long way out, but if you give us one Sunday, I say this continually, just give us one Sunday out of out of the month, um, and you choose the Sunday. It doesn't matter to us which one, but we would love for you to come and worship with us in person. 
Um, we have a number that you can uh, reach us at, um, and that number is 681-533-0236. Again, that's 681-533-0236. Um, follow the prompts, leave us a mess, leave me a message, and if I don't answer right away, I will get back in touch with you. Um, but again, um, Worship with us on Facebook, just as you did, um, just as we're doing this for tonight. Excuse me, if you know someone who does not like going on Facebook, we also publish it on YouTube under the Rivertown uh, logo. Uh, and we are working with a young lady to see if we can also get it on Instagram. Uh, we hopefully we'll be able to do that in the very near future. So those are ways that you can connect with us. Um, for those who might be struggling to leave the past behind or struggling because you don't know um, uh, how to get away from what it is that's tempting you, I direct your attention to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, um, you read it the entire uh, chapter, but I direct you specifically to verse 13, where it says, No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to to endure it. I'll leave you with that. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. Again, Minister um, Esther, thank you for an outstanding message on Sunday. We encourage you to go back and listen, uh, not only to this past Sunday's message, but we have so many, um, as Pastor said, we have a uh, mental Awareness uh, Sunday. That was the Sunday before, third Sunday. And um, you know, just take a look on YouTube. We've got we've got several that really just bless bless your spirit. So thank you guys so much for joining, and we will see you guys again very soon. Good night. And Pastor, what do we what do we say? Good night. Be blessed. We love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. Good night.